It is 38 minutes past 7 o'clock on 99 FM. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Ignition. It is a Tuesday morning and it is where we celebrate our Royal Hustlers, Namibian Royal Hustlers. Now, if you are an avid listener, you will remember earlier on this year, I had the, well, she now goes by Honorable uh, Deputy Minister of Information, Communication and Technology, Emma Phyllis. She was here just as a global shaper and she didn't even mention, not utter a word about her future. Emma, thank you so much for joining us once again. It's Thank great to have you. you back. Thank you, Chef, for having me again. You kicked butt at the <laughs> Knockout Project. Uh-huh. Well done on your Adora Thank performance. Thank you so much. But let's, Thank start, you. let's start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of childhood did you have growing up? Well, I had a very simple childhood. I grew up in Katutura um, with both my parents um, in Vanaida, and it was quite simple. I attended people's primary school just behind Shopra Katutura. Uh, PPS, PPS, shout PPS, yes, you know. Yes. Um, <laughs> and after school, I would go to an after school center called the Kayak Trust, which is just down the road from my house. So, mm. would take part in leadership training, sporting activities, really just to keep the yes. young people in the community busy. So, that's what I did. Very yeah. chilled, um, spoke a lot, but. <laughs> But it was very it was a very chill childhood mm. and had a support of a family and a community that supported me in whatever mm. I, I ended and took so absolutely yeah. yeah growing up those years as a young mm. girl what mm. were your dreams or your ambitions for your future your yeah. career especially did you ever think Emma yeah. Teofilis, <laughs> that you would end up as the youngest parliamentarian in history in the land of the brave no I didn't think that I thought I would become a pediatrician from mm. early on I knew I loved children and yeah. I and I had this dream of being a children's doctor and saving their lives and but then of course you know <laughs> things changed yes. um at yes. 13 i learned how to be policy adjacent i became more involved in advocacy i got more involved in what human rights are and mm. i thought wow this is what i love this is my passion i could talk about it i could do it mm. every day and i wouldn't get tired so so that changed a little bit but i think with that change brought on this role i have now because mm. i always knew i was going to be related to law and policy and that's mm. why I studied law mm. in the end but yeah I think it was a good change absolutely yeah. how's about some of the fondest memories of growing up or going to school at PPS in high school and uh, your tertiary education what stands out so many I mean at PPS we used to have a place called the back of the moon back of the moon back of the moon it was like way behind the school where like you know where you could literally just you know have the weirdest conversations where you could take a long mini games and play literally go through the longest break because you know the teachers are now looking for, for you, you and it's, it was <laughs> it was really one of the fondest memories because it was a time where as a young child as children we could bond you yeah. know we were being naughty but also yeah. doing sort of constructive things by having sure. like important conversations yeah. so it was it was really fun yeah. and the place itself back of the moon was was always you know iconic like where are you going the back of the moon yeah. <laughs> I like it in Tura, no? you know <laughs> How about a side hustle? Did you ever have a chance to sort of do something on the side as a yeah. high school student, as a young girl? Yeah. Very much so. From high school up to university, I did a lot of talking gigs, um, whether it's uh, mm. moderating mm. Uh, panels, uh, emceeing, mm. um, and, and just speaking. And, and I was paid for that. Mm. Um, that that because I did debating from grade nine, so I really mastered the art of speaking mm. and following conversation and asking the right questions. So that came in handy when people saw me speak at panels and they're like but do you want to moderate mm-hmm. and then they asked me but how much do you charge and i'm like oh, oh you get paid. Okay. okay so i set up a whole invoice and everything and i asked around okay like well, what are the yeah. normal rates you yeah. know so i don't you know scare away uh. people so yeah that's how it started and that maintained me for a while your motivation emma what drives you what is the one thing that you get why do you get up and do what you do the Namibian girl child. Mm. I, I think I know how it feels to be a Namibian girl child with dreams and hopes. Mm. Um, what a supportive system has done for me and what also a supportive system has not done for many young people that I, mm. I worked with and was at the kayak center with, the homes they came from. And the girl child was always two steps behind mm. and had to work twice as hard to reach whatever they want to reach. So for me, the girl child, like... 
when I see a young woman, a young girl, confident and like, like that, that just, yeah. you know, it, it just fuels me. Yeah. And it makes me want that for every young woman in this country. So for me, the girl child will always be my priority. I've spoken about this for so long. Mm. It's almost like a repeated record, but the girl child truly, truly drives me. My boss once said, um, cliches are cliches because they are true. That's exactly right. Yeah. The most, in- you obviously read. Yes, of Plenty course. of full of Of course, full. of course. What's the most interesting thing you read this week or that you've been reading yeah. this month? Well, this week I saw that they coined a new term for us millennials. Uh, we are being are called now us? the COVID generation. No. No, really. They're talking about how the COVID generation is now more behind than ever because of the pandemic. And I'm just like, no, we cannot have <laughs> that traumatic I'm experience. Sorry. I refuse. Follow us for the rest of our lives. <laughs> COVID generation, yeah. that's us. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, there's Generation Z, we are COVID generation. Karma. I would think that there is an opportunity out of this. No, gen- really. You know, like, plenty of no. things came out for us. No, really. Yes. But yeah, that's what I read and I thought, okay. okay. <laughs> interesting. Well, well, oh, yeah, yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. The three things that you are loving most about Namibia right now. Mm. There's a lot to love. But there's also a lot of work. Mm. But what I love most is our ability to express ourselves. Mm. And, and that's a fact. I have had the opportunity um, uh, to travel around. Mm. And, you know, in some states, you know, you can't just mention a person's name like that mm. because you don't know who's listening. Mm. You can't express yourself in social media and so on. But mm. we have that gift as a country to truly and unapologetically express ourselves. Of course, hopefully with um, a responsibility but and responsibly, but we do have that ability. Mm. And I think another would be the ability to just go out of your house and go do what you want. Yes. Not many children, not many people have the ability to just go out and take a walk um, in the middle of day and go in certain parts of the city or their country. We can do that. Literally, you could travel alone on Namibian roads freely without possibly hijacking truly truly yeah, it's possible but yeah. very unlikely yeah. that, that's the truth and then the third one perhaps i think it's the creativity of our young people i mean more and this more generation is this cover generation <laughs> more and more like i think in most strenuous times more and more of us are becoming more creative and more innovative and we're really stepping up and stepping up to the plate to see what we can do for our country. And mm-hmm. I think that is what I'm seeing and that is what I appreciate because once we continuously love our country, we will be unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I've been seeing. People do really feel love for this country and care for it and worry about it mm-hmm. and are interested now more than ever about its future. And that for me is just great. And you are a prime example of that, let me see. You are a prime example of that. Let's go to some quick facts about you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we don't get a chance to talk to parliamentarians <laughs> off the cuff, <laughs> out the box you usually, know? but just some fun facts mm-hmm. about you. What mm-hmm. is your favorite movie? Ah, uh, yeah. I really like Mad Max. Mad Max! Mad Max From Fury the Road. Yes! <laughs> Yes. You know, I, I mean, it's it's just the power of women. Mm. I mean, it, like there were there were really nuanced messages in that movie, mm. showing that women are decisive, the power of women. You know, it, for me, it was just a whole thing. I mean, the first <laughs> Mad Max they had Tina Turner. The, you know, as the boss you know, game down. It was for me. It's just Mad Max. My favorite part of the day is yeah. the morning. What's your favorite part of the day? Ah, uh, the evenings. The evenings. Where finally I can rest down. and rewind. Yes. Yay. I love my evenings. I don't even like taking calls, but you know, <laughs> nowadays I can't. No, we mentioned that you performed as Adora yes. uh, in the MTC Knockout Project. When yes. was that important for you to participate, man? Um, well, okay, the first, when MTC reached out to me, the first thing was, <clears throat> oh, you're doing another uh, project to kick out another social ill because the first one I took part in was the mm. gender-based violence mm. one last year. And then I heard this year, okay, we're doing a whole performance. I was like, Hmm. <laughs> I want to, but like, but are I'm you sure? sure. Uh. You know, are you, like, <laughs> don't you want someone more in the creative space? <laughs> and they're like, no, we really want you to, to come on board because, um, you know, you're young. And I'm like, okay. Mm, mm. Um, so what's the idea? They told me all about it, the concept. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and who am I performing with? So they gave me options. Uh. And then Odora was one of the options. And I thought, oh, Adora is so dynamic. Yes. Hopefully I can speak in Damaran. Yes. I can sing in Damaran. Yes. So I was like, a daughter uh-huh. but but really the project with the funds you know the funds from last year 
went to gender-based violence. Mm. They they sponsored one of the organizations being called the Monica Gender-Based mm. Violence mm. Solutions. Mm. And they really do good work in the community of Samora Michelle, where I am from. Mm. You know, Vanaida, Khoria, Khab, Havana. Mm. That's where they do their work and they're doing so well. So mm. for me, that was a motivation to take part this year. Find a sponsor. Mm. Shout out to your NFEA mm. for coming through. I've worked with them before and when I just called them in less than three days, they said, look, we're committing yeah. and you know homelessness you know and i said at the at the launch that homelessness is is a social ill across the world but in namibia we're based we're, we're faced with social ills such as gender based, gender based violence imagine being a homeless young mm. woman no social net no social protection probably no support system you are the most vulnerable of yeah. vulnerable yeah. in this country yeah. and not let's talk about, let's not talk about the children yeah. so for me homelessness is really that thing where it's it's a basic basic shelter basic right that should be at least the standard for everyone and yeah. we don't have that yeah. and we need to find a way to solve it so yeah. for me that was my motivation absolutely yeah. now performing as a dora yeah uh, your favorite local song uh, is, she, is it going to be a dora or <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is no right share. now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know if you're listening. I still love you, but <laughs> my favorite song, right now? PDK. PDK. I, I think PDK have always been oh, really yes. that. You know, they're, 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 they're the they're the the guys they think they are so yes. PDK PDK <laughs> for me is and, and I'm so happy they won song of the year Saka yeah. and you know that was well deserved and last but yeah. not least mm-hmm. Kapana or Ooh, Pizza Kapana lady <laughs> I don't even I didn't no, no, need to no, hear no. the other part like, no what <laughs> Kapana Namibia is finest yes. Kapana there's no way there's no way Emma thank you so much for joining us this morning um, could you give us your Twitter handle you know yes. for peeps to yes. follow you out there yes uh, catch me on Twitter at Emma to your fellas mm-hmm. uh, on Instagram um, to your fellas, uh, lower dash Emma. Um, also Facebook Emma to your fellas. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us this yes. this morning and congratulations on, on taking Namibian youth to the parliament. Mm-hmm. I believe they have so much hopes and so much dreams yes. in you and we know, we know, we can feel it in our soul <laughs> that you will change things in, you. in, in your ministry where you work. So thank, thank you. you so much for your time this morning and thank you for coming to tell us your story. Thank you for having me, Shay. Yeah. Head on over to the back of the moon, she said. I I mean, if you are in Tura Da by PPS, you can probably go and check it out and maybe sit there and be inspired by what those young people who used to sit there back then were inspired by. Because we need a whole lot of inspiration to continue to do the work. And Emma, as she said, very passionate about the girl child, giving an opportunity to each and every single girl child out there is her main focus so she's working on that each and every single day. She is doing the work. That's a wrap of your... Royal Hustle this morning. To wrap things up, of course I've got some PDK lined up.